Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative and welcome to 2022. How'd we get here? I still think that 2019 was like two weeks ago. Anyway, I am waiting on the December scholar box, the January scholar box, the January art snacks, waiting on all of them. But this is the December 2020 box a year old now. This is the box that I got for free when I took advantage of the pre-Black Friday deal that Scrawler Box was offering. So this is what we're gonna do today for the first video of 2022. I am going to open this. I'm going to sort of live react. I know what's in it, but you know, you're, you're gonna get my reaction opening it. I will read you the card and um, I don't remember exactly what the prompt is, but I do remember that I am not particularly inspired by it, so I'm going to be doing something else. That's going to be a complete surprise to both you and me because I am doing all of this voiceover stuff early. So we're going to do that and when I am done reading you the card, talking about the supplies, then I will just tell you how my uh, two weeks off went, that kind of thing. And I'll ask you what sort of content you want to see going into 2022. So let's get this box open, shall we? So here's that zine. Let's uh, look for the actual menu card first. Hopefully it's tucked in here. Otherwise that would be the second time I've back ordered a box and not got the menu card. And it would be the second time I haven't got the menu card in the December box. Not the same boxes. Here's the featured print, the featured artist for the December 2020 box. This is Marta Betelege. Sorry, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And it looks like we'll be working on watercolor paper. I'm really excited to try this. I didn't even know that Derwent made art papers. So yeah, curious about that. So we have a Faber-Castell Gold Faber 6B pencil. Gosh, that is a soft lead. If you know me, you know I like my 2H, so this this is going to be torture. We have a Royal R19 number four round brush. So this is a synthetic bristle watercolor brush, Royal and Langnickel. I don't know why it says Royal and, but doesn't finish. This is a Derwent kneadable eraser. I am tempted to pull out a different kneadable eraser and not open this because these things get so sticky and messy and it doesn't come in a cover case. Cute sticker. This part of the print. Cool, hey? I mean, the stickers are always inspired by the print, but it's cool to actually see it. And we have some Marabou art crayons. These are mixed media water soluble artist crayons. I am under the impression that they're very similar to the Faber-Castell gelatos, but I know a lot of people who actually got this box when it was the new mystery box loved these kept an eye on these on Amazon and ordered the full set. So I'm very curious to see if these maybe melt down and dissolve completely and don't leave grit like sometimes the gelatos do. Really curious to see if I like them more. And of course this watercolor paper, we have 12 sheets. It is 300 GSM. I believe it's cold press. Super smooth surface. So actually maybe hot press or not press. A5, acid free, that's good to know. Let's open this while I'm still talking at you kind of live so that we can assess the texture of this paper. Oh wow, that is very smooth. Yeah, this, this feels like a hot press paper. Why not? Let's open one of these crayons too. Okay, so they do twist like lipstick, just like the gelatos. Let's just do a little test. A testy test. Goes on very easily, very smooth. It does feel like you're drawing with lipstick. Let's grab a brush and do a little poke. You don't actually need to know this, but for context, I am standing in the middle of a mess because when we got home, I decided to rearrange the office and I'm not done yet, which is why you're going to be seeing this video as late as possible. Here's direct activation on the page. Probably used too much water, but wow, that kind of only half picks up, but it does spread color. Look at that. Let's try activating it here. Getting a much paler color there. Plate method. Still messy for my last piece in December cause I don't clean things apparently. Shouldn't affect much though, don't worry. 
all looking very samey. Looks like if you want that truly pigmented color, you have to just directly draw with the crayon. And uh, confirms that this artist had a full set because look how deep that red is. Look what this is doing. It'd be interesting to see what this does if I tried to layer on top after it's dry. Ooh, that gets nice color when you go over a wet spot. Ooh, look at that. I like that effect. Coloring on a wet page. That is nice. That's cool. Oh, ho, ho, that's how you get the color. That's how you get the pigment payoff. Look at that. Box number 64, December 2020. This month, we are bringing a splash of color to the end of what has turned out to be a strange and pretty miserable year. Now is the time to get to work expressing those frustrations and pent up emotions, turning them into something beautiful. Use the content of this box to art away your worries and reset ready for a better new year. Try not to worry about the details or the finished outcome, but use the process to express an emotion or feeling. Let the mark making and line work do the talking rather than the subject matter. Express yourself, let loose, and create. And depressingly, that is very appropriate for this new year. Just as appropriate for this new year as it was for last new year. First item on the card, Marabou Art Crayons. These art crayons are buttery smooth, wax-based, soft pastels in a sturdy, fully loaded, retractable holder with an ergonomic grip and a clear protective cap. They are a versatile medium, suitable for a variety of fine art and mixed media work. They work well on raw or primed surfaces such as paper, canvas, fabric, or wood. They provide a vivid, light mass pigment and are water soluble, so can also be used to create seamless blends and washes and are wipe resistant after 24 hours. These crayons are a highly forgiving art product that you can work with in tons of ways, working and reworking to your creative heart's content. It is a product that encourages play and experimentation, so you can let your experiments run wild a little. RRP is £6.99 per crayon. I will have the total for three crayons in the description down below. I will also have these prices converted to US dollars and Canadian dollars as per usual. I will total the RRP for the box. I will total what this would cost if you were to go seek these items out at major online retailers for those currency regions. All that stuff as per usual in the description box down below, just as if I were doing one of my no box art box videos, I do that for my actual boxes as well. Faber Castell Gold Faber Pencil 6B. The Gold Faber Pencil is a high quality, very versatile graphite pencil with a super soft core perfect for expressing yourself through sketch. A great addition to your art supply collection and excels with its exceptional sketching performance. The hexagonal shape and the break resistant lead with the typical gold paper secure bonding process make them an ideal companion during pencil work for any artist. And we love the classy purple and gold stripe. RRP is 70 cents. Derwent Kneadable Eraser. This soft and pliable eraser is perfect for erasing as well as lifting out tone and color. Its use is suitable for graphite, colored, and pastel pencils. It can be used to create a variety of erasing techniques, including highlighting, stippling, and ghosting. RRP is £2.69. Royal and Langnickel Taclon Brush. This Royal and Langnickel brush is a high-quality instrument created with expert craftsmanship. It is suitable for all manner of water-based mediums and is easily cleaned with soap and water to remove any pigment residue, ensuring long durability and reuse. RRP is £1.29. Derwent Watercolor Pad 300 GSM A5. Developed especially for water-soluble pencils, this smooth paper is perfect for water-soluble color, inks, and watercolor paints. The smooth surface also provides an excellent base for the Marabou Art crayons included in this box. Apply them directly and use the smooth sheets to blend colors together with your fingers, then add some water and put this paper through its paces, experimenting with these supplies. RRP is £7.29. The scrawler challenge for this box is expressive expressions, but I am probably not doing that. Tell me in the comments down below, do you like what I ended up doing? Again, I'm doing this voiceover before I do it, so I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm going to admit something right now. When I saw that this was the December box, shortly after cancelling my ongoing subscription. I was definitely not disappointed about missing this one. I was a little disappointed about missing the one prior to this, the November 2020. That was the graffitint pan set, but this one, not so much. I figured they would be exactly like 
the gelatos. I think those are cool, but I think they're kind of just a gimmick. I didn't think that I would want a full set. Not to knock anybody who loves them or has a full set, but I have so many water soluble supplies. So like, why would I need yet another full set? I don't know, we'll see, maybe these entice me. So as I mentioned in my last few videos in December, we were finally going to BC to visit my family for the first time in two years, and we did, and it was great. It was too short, honestly. It was so nice to see my family again. Like, it was so nice to, you know, get a hug from mom and actually see my sister face to face. But most importantly, I was so glad to see my grandma. She turns 98 at the end of this month, and two years ago, right before all the lockdown started, I honestly thought that that was going to be the last time I ever saw her in person. Cause like when, when people get into their 90s, you just, you don't know, things change fast. And we typically only visit once a year. And then last year we didn't get to visit because of, you know, the pandemic situation. So it's, it was a blessing to be able to go see her. And uh, she's currently moving from one aunt's basement to another. She'll now have lived with all three of her daughters. <laughs> and uh, the basement suite she's moving to has a smaller kitchen than the one she's in now. She's moving because the daughter she's living with, my aunt she's living with, is trying to move. And, and because she's moving to a place with a smaller kitchen, she's giving away everything in her china cabinet so that she could use the china cabinet as like cupboards that she can actually access because the smaller kitchen only has like mostly low to the ground cupboards and she's about to be 98. And so that means that a lot of stuff was passed off on me. And she's also just downsizing like stuffing closets and whatnot. And like it's, on one hand, it's, it's distressing to see somebody you love giving everything away because it kind of feels like she's ready for the end. But on the other hand, she is moving into a smaller suite and she's definitely under the impression that it's even smaller than it is. So part of it's just like actually downsizing. But anyway, I got her sewing machine. She was, she's been talking for a long time about giving me her sewing machine and we weren't sure if she was gonna give me the actual sewing machine or if she was going to fund me buying a sewing machine just because of how heavy and clunky and awkward it is to actually take a sewing machine in checked baggage for flying. While we did it that way, I have a 25, 30-ish year old Janome sewing machine in my cupboard now <laughs> and uh, apparently it looks suspicious on the baggage scanners because uh, that suitcase got opened and that suitcase has now flown its last because when they closed it up again they forced the zipper past a bad spot that I never take it past and I couldn't even get it all the way open it was awkward getting stuff out of the suitcase so yeah that happened <laughs> But yeah, now I have a sewing machine. Now I need to actually learn to use it. But on top of that, she gave a whole bunch of little knick-knacky antiques and collectibles. She gave me two sets of salt and pepper shakers that were made in the 1940s in Canada. And she thought that they were solid silver and I'm kind of horrified now knowing that she thought that they were solid silver because they're silver plated lead and the uh, the holes in the caps have residue in them. It's very clear that these were actually used as salt and pepper shakers, not just ornamentation. <laughs> one is made by Monarch plate brand and one set is made by Viking. Those may or may not be different names for the same company, but they were both definitely Canadian companies made in the 1940s. I'm not sure if that makes them purchased in society. Saskatchewan where she grew up or in British Columbia where she moved to. She moved around age 20 which would be 1944 so there you have it. She also gave me a tiny vase that has some very pretty flowers on it. That was made in the 1950s, probably, in Bavaria, Germany. The particular mark on the bottom of it was used between 1949 and 1989. My mother was born in 1961 and she remembers it being around all her life, so probably made in the 50s. She gave me a English bone china high heel shoe with pansies in it. Apparently I coveted this thing as a small child and I honestly don't remember coveting it in particular but it's gorgeous and I'm happy to have it. She gave me a pewter silver viking ship from Norway. 
also probably 1950s or 60s. We actually, she gave two of them to my sister and I, and uh, my sister didn't know about it at first. Mom let me pick, and I, I picked the smaller one because it actually says Norga on the sail, which is Norway in Norwegian. My sister got a bigger one, but it doesn't say anything on it, and I don't think she minds. Sorry if you do, Jess. She gave my daughter Dorothy some stuffed animals and also, to everybody's surprise, a little glass squirrel that nobody was ever allowed to touch when we were kids. Not just my generation, mom and my aunt's generation as well. Nobody was ever allowed to touch this. And the first visit when we got there, she brings out these stuffed animals and she gives my daughter this tiny little glass squirrel that nobody else was ever allowed to touch. And so my daughter starts playing with it along with her plastic dogs. And this was perfectly fine, apparently. All of my aunts ended up visiting at the same time spontaneously and everybody was like giving each other looks like, is this happening? Really? The four-year-old's allowed to play with this? And she was also giving like really random stuff like shoes that she doesn't ever wear anymore or can't wear so i got some running shoes some athletic shoes that are in fairly new condition and they're, they're a little bit old person style but not too bad they're gray and white and that's fine they're lace up they not what i would have bought in the store but i do need new runners so i will take free ones but she also caught me off guard wanted me to take this other pair of uh, running shoes that are, you know, ye old person, minimum age of 70, Velcro, solid white shoes. <laughs> I'm like, eh, no, I don't think I'm even allowed to wear these. I'm only 33. I didn't, I didn't say it like that to her. I just, I, I gave my mom a horrified look and mom phrased it more gently. <laughs> uh, what else did we do? We took Dorothy to a park that had a whole bunch of lights around it, did like a half hour walk around this park. That was really fun. My mom and sister and I did go to an art store. First time I've been in a proper dedicated art store since my last visit out that way two years ago. I didn't get a huge haul, but I will probably show it all off when I review the paper that I got because I did get some paper paper I'd like to review. Excited about it. Not gonna spoil it. You'll have to wait and see. The flights there and back were two completely different stories. The flights there went very smoothly and kiddo had no problem with the airports or the airplanes or anything like that. On the way back, uh, we... Vancouver airport was fine. That first flight from Vancouver to Toronto was fine. We land in Toronto. Our next plane is delayed an hour. So now instead of two hours and something minutes, we've got like three and a half hours. And uh, I got an email that there was a gate change. So we walk like 10 minutes to a different part of the airport. And as soon as we get there and find a bathroom and get settled, then I get another email, gate change again, back to where we were. It was, it was, yeah. And then we find our seats there. And then my husband decides, let's get some a and onion rings. Cause we passed an A&W in the food court area on the way past both directions. So he sits at the gate with our daughter. I go stand for way too long in line at the NW, only to be told that they're not selling the full menu in the airport, and apparently that means no onion rings. Who, who in the world expects NW not to have onion rings? So then we're waiting at the gate for what was now supposed to be three and a half hours, turned into five and a half hours, and they they canceled an earlier flight to St. John's and combined it with our flight. So half of the people at the gate were very angry because they didn't know what was going on, and then this poor gate agent finally at one point in his update announcements to the the gate area admits to us that he's not a trained gate agent he works elsewhere in the airline company and he's just filling in so he's following procedure manuals and doesn't really know how to handle it and then as we're waiting more we find out that the reason that we're not boarding yet even though we can see our aircraft out the window is because we don't have a flight crew the flight crew is coming in on another flight that was also delayed and seriously like as the flight crew finally arrives and walks through the down the bridge everybody clapped like that's a joke things that don't happen but seriously everybody clapped it's kind of funny would have been more funny if our four-year-old hadn't decided that she's terrified of the automatic flush toilets that are everywhere in the airport even in the accessible washroom so we had a very very tired four-year-old who desperately needed a washroom 
but wouldn't use one. <laughs> and uh, right now we're actually in isolation at home because the Newfoundland government has decided that if you are double vaccinated, you still have to isolate. We were given packs of rapid tests that we have to use every single day for the first five days and if all of those are clear then 120 hours after we landed which will be sunday morning then we're free yeah going into 2022 i want to do more like art supply art work art process tips and tricks review type videos let me know what kind of stuff you want to see i have noticed that whenever i don't have like a breakout video my uh, top views for the last 48 hours always reverts back to the the uh, putting Copic nibs in cheat markers video and the how to tell if your microns are fake video, which is great. It's great to see that I have evergreen content, but also why couldn't those have gone viral back in 2018 when I made them? And you know, why isn't newer stuff the stuff that's always in there? Why is it always those? So I desperately need to create something else that has that kind of success. Also plans coming up for 2022. I am going to continue doing the colors of the month challenge every month. We will be doing the art addicts lines on the third Friday of every month as per usual. I do have art boxes coming for January and February and then that's it. Uh, some of those will happen in March just because of international shipping but I do not at this point plan to renew either of them. I did finalize the manuscript for one of my children's books and so I will probably be using that as an excuse to actually do some of those illustrations on camera. I don't want to actually discuss the plot of the book obviously. I do kind of need to protect my work. So what kind of topics would you like to go with that? Do you want the illustration process for a book in general? Do you want the writing process for a children's book in general? Do you want decisions made for the particular piece I'm doing in the video? Let me know. And if you know of any other trends or things that you just really enjoy in the art sphere here on YouTube, also let me know so that I can plan more content for this year. Okay, quick cut in here from Jenna of the future since I decided to take longer with this video. I realized that there was no way I was going to reasonably get this done for Friday, so I decided to edit and release on Saturday. So I, I do have some final thoughts. As you can see, I did a goofy little face here. It's very rough because the card said to just be rough and experiment and go with the flow. If you recognize this guy, let me know in the comments down below. I do want to do some actual dedicated fan art that's better than this, but I had fun. This is uh, based on my sister's uh, current obsession that after spending a week with her has become my current obsession. I do like these, the Marabou Cray I don't really see that they're much different than the Faber-Castell gelatos and I really can't see myself investing in more of them just because I do have so many other water-soluble mediums that I like better, but I do understand why some people are crazy about them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient with me. I will be back to a regular schedule next week. Let's hope 2022 is better for us, shall we? If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!